Welcome to our next Monocure 3D Pro Tips video where we will be covering the process of hollowing models in Chaiti Box. So let's get started with a very basic example of hollowing using a fairly simple shape. In this case, a gemstone shape with some basic geometry. Let's start with placing the base of the gemstone hard against the build plate. To do this, we select Rotate and then Flatten by Face. We then click on a mesh face on the base of the gemstone. This then places that surface hard against the build plate. The next step is to hollow the gemstone. To do this, we select the Hollow option on the top bar. We then need to decide how thick the wall of the model will be once we hollow the inside. In this case, we'll go with a 4mm thick outer wall. We then have the option of filling that cavity with a 3D grid of varying density. In our case, we won't bother with that option. Let's click on Start and watch the animation of the hollowing process. If we now look at the inside of the model, you can see that Chaitu box has created an approximation of an inner wall mesh which is 4mm in from the outer skin of the model. This mesh is not particularly smooth and can show some signs of bad meshing. We'll look at why that can become an issue in a bit. Let's now look at how the model will appear hanging off the build plate at about 10 to 20 millimeters into the job. As you can see, the surface area holding the model to the build plate is smaller than the widest part of the gemstone. And as you can see, it looks like the shape of a suction cup. This is where hollowing a model can lead to issues. To prevent that shape from being a suction cup, we need to put some holes into it to let it breathe. So to do this, we select the dig hole option on the top bar. Here we can specify the shape and diameter of the hole. We will cut into the wall of the model. In this case, we will make a 2.5mm circular hole in the wall of the model up to a depth of 13mm. Note that you have the option to keep the plug created from the hole to later plug up that hole. However, I'll cover why sealing the holes up can lead to issues down the track. Here you can see I've added two holes at the lowest point on the model, closest to the build plate. The cavity can now release suction pressure through these two holes. Now the only tension when the model lifts off the FEP sheet is on the rim of the shape, not the entire cavity of the model. This is the main reason people choose to hollow their models. Let's have another look at the inner mesh created by the hollowing process. If I have a look at the inner top point, there are some strange mesh faces that can potentially leave floating islands that end up stuck to the FEP. If I quickly slice the model and look at the layers created, there appears to be a few spots that look like they could pose a problem during the print. However, they seem connected to the outer wall, so should end up still attached to the inside of the model. Okay, let's now talk about elephant's foot. The elephant in the room. This is where the base layers, which have a much longer exposure time, end up making the base of the model bloat outwards. If you've placed holes in those first few layers, you potentially can end up with a portion of the holes being blocked by resin in the holes, being overexposed. If we go into settings on the right, we now have an option under the advanced tab called bottom tolerance compensation. This allows us to shrink the size of the base layer's slices to compensate for that expansion in size due to overexposure. This can alleviate the issue of holes being closed over by the extra UV exposure. In this case, I've applied a shrinkage of 0.2 millimeters. You could go higher though. Also, under the print tab, we should probably consider reducing the lift speed to give the breathe holes a chance to do their job. We should also consider increasing the lift height if the outer dimensions of the layers take up a fair proportion of the LCD area. Let's now look at a larger model, which in this case has been pre-hollowed with a thin outer wall. As you can see, the wall of the model is reasonably thin. This is where you are more likely to see the shape of the model get distorted and layer lines starting to appear. Another thing to consider is if there are unsupported surfaces inside the model. 
in this case at the armpits and at the top of the head. Let's deal with that under the support tab. I find the medium supports have just enough tip size to not fail on me, so I use those to support the inside and outside of the model. If I click on all, it will support all the areas inside and out that need supporting. If I click platform, it will only add supports where the base can touch the platform. This will omit the inside cavity of the model. So let's select all. However, in this case, it's only added a couple of supports on the inside of the model. The reason for this is that I set the angle option to the right to 10 degrees. Let's change that to 70 degrees and see what happens when I click all. Now we have an excess of supports being used inside and out. How about 50 degrees? That looks like the right amount of supports for this model. What we now need to consider is how to best get all the resin out of the model once it's removed from the build plate. This model sits flat on a desk, so we can just hide a couple of drain holes here and here. Quick slice to see if everything is nicely supported and that there are breathe holes in the right spots. In this case, it looks like the two small holes that were already on the model are not as low as they should be on the inner cavity. I'll make two new ones lower down. The last thing I need to do is make sure the base of the supports are not touching the model. So I'll go through and sort that out by either removing unnecessary supports or just moving them away. The other option is to use the cone shape for the base of the supports and set them to about 8mm in diameter and about 0.5mm thick. And this model is ready to slice and print. This last model is a little more complex as it will involve dealing with multiple cavities once we hollow the model. In this case, the horse will be attached directly to the build plate and will require plenty of supports. I'll hollow with a 3mm wall and no infill structure. Now you can see there is not only a cavity in the main body, but also inside the head. These two cavities don't actually connect. I'll deal with the main body breathe holes first. The lowest point seems to be the chest, but there are also a couple of cups created at the top of the legs. I'll add a 2mm hole here to start with, and then two others that will face towards the inside of each leg at the top of the rear legs. This should then give us enough breathe holes to prevent any suction cup effects. We then have the cavity in the head to deal with. If I look at the sliced layers, there appears to be a fine gap at the mouth line. However, this will probably not allow for enough resin slash airflow to let that cavity breathe. So let's consider putting a hole at the lowest point in the chin. Unfortunately, that doesn't look so great on the model, so perhaps there is somewhere else we can place holes. Perhaps the nostrils, that might look more appropriate. The trick is finding the right size hole that Chai Tea Box will allow me to add. One millimeter isn't working. Zero point six millimeters works. And we'll do the same on the other side.
When I now look at the slice layers, the two thin cavities go from the nostrils to the cavity inside the head. Fairly good compromise. What I'd now like to be able to do is link up the cavity in the head with the cavity in the body to make it easier to clean out any residues inside the final print. This proved to be a real challenge. Eventually, I found the right spot and direction to add a hole. Setting the cutting tool a little bit longer seemed to resolve the issue. Now when I slice the model I can see there is now a hole which joins both cavities. However, for some odd reason I ended up with an extra hole on the back of the horse's neck. Oh well, I'll deal with that another time. We're now ready to support the model inside and out using the All option under the Support tab. And as you can see, I now have supports inside the model as well. However, these will not impact being able to clean and drain the model. Now all I need to do is move the base of the supports away from the hooves, and then I should be good to go with slicing and printing. And we're done. We'll save this off to a USB stick and start printing. So to summarise, the three main points that I think you really need to follow when you're hollowing a model is first of all make sure that you've got breathe holes at the lowest point in the cavity. Make sure you've got holes that are uh, large enough for you to be able to clean out the cavity completely and always make sure that that cavity is completely cleaned out. If you have an air compressor that certainly helps to reduce the amount of residue that's left inside the model but do not plug up the holes. If you plug up the holes, even the smallest amount of residue will gas off and cause expansion and cracking. So leave those holes open. I hope you found this video informative, and if you have any questions or thoughts on this topic, please feel free to comment below.